I'm Nick, uh, I'm an engineer, uh, Python engineer, I guess, at Telnix, uh, and we are hiring. So uh, Telnix uh, is an awesome place. Uh, there's like a ton of engineers here. Uh, we probably have like 50% of them are Python. Uh, and we're also like polyglot, so um, you know, we're kind of building next-gen phone stuff, so we do like voice and messaging, and you can kind of, uh, you know, you could call up basically a number and then that number will start talking to an HTTP server, HTTP server you have. Uh, so you can do like programmatic things. Uh, it's really cool. Um, but I am not here to talk to you about voice. I'm here to talk to you about magic methods. Uh, so has, do people like know kind of what magic methods are in Python? Have you, have you ever heard of this? Well, you're gonna find out. Um, so in Python, everything is an object. So when you're saying, you know, A equals two, A is an object. Um, the two is an object. Uh, if you create objects, they're objects, obviously. Like class, if you instantiate classes, like dictionaries, lists, uh, sets, um, strings, these are all objects. And then lots of kind of ordinary syntax calls. So if you like add two things together, behind the scenes, that's calling methods on these objects. Uh, and then this third one, because uh, magic is, I don't know, it's Latin, uh, we'll get to that. Um, so what are magic methods? These are all the magic methods. Uh, They'll study them, there'll be a quiz at the end. Um, kind of very broadly, like you've seen some of these. Uh, here's like init, uh, if you've ever. Uh, dir, yeah, so there's dir over here, uh, as you know, uh, Ali was showing. Um, so kind of broadly, there's like some classes in here. Uh, some of them are like kind of dealing with uh, life cycles of objects. Uh, a whole giant block of them here are like infix operators. So if you say a plus b, that's in there. Uh, if you say a plus equals b, that's in this kind of augmented assignment section. Uh, there's methods for containers. So if you have like a list, a dictionary, uh, that's kind of calling stuff out of here. Uh, attributes, it's like a dot b, it's calling stuff out of here. Um, and this is, you know, it's all just kind of like normal syntax, and it's, it's calling these behind the scenes. Uh, so kind of why magic methods are cool uh, is because they basically help you separate the concerns in your code. So you don't care, like the caller who's using your code, which might be you as well, like you don't want to have to like do all these crazy gymnastics like right where you're doing your kind of high level logic. You just want it to work, right? Um, and then also like it's for duct typing. So you can basically make things that look like other things and then pass them in uh, and then like kind of whatever takes them will be happy to treat, you know, your object just like a dictionary if you implemented uh, the correct methods. Um, you know, so like something like this. If you do C equals A plus B, uh, kind of inside that's calling like this, you know, monstrosity. So it's a method on A. So like the dot, the dunder add. So dunder is for double underscore. Uh, so double underscore add, and then calling that method with B as an argument, and then it's basically giving that back uh, into C. Um, for kind of the mathy type methods, there's a whole bunch of them. Uh, you know, add, uh, true division, because we're in Python 3 and there's only one type of division. Uh, the true division, I don't know. Um, so, uh, mult, like multiply, and then also matmul. Uh, this is like, I think, a 3.5 operator. Um, nothing in the standard library uses it, so like you could do, use it for like creative stuff if you want. Uh, I think numpy uh, is going to use it for matrix multiplication. I, I don't know kind of where they're at with that. Um, and then also there's things like for iteration. So if you say for y and x, uh, you know, it's, it seems like pretty basic, like it's, you're just looping over x, right? But internally it's doing something kind of like this. It's probably even more like of a monstrosity uh, where it's basically using the iter method of x and then creating an iterator and then looping over that by calling next on that iterator until it stops and then, you know, and then it quits. Um, so like you could write this like every time you want to write a for loop and it worked the same. But like, do we want to do that? No, it's it's, it's horrible, right? Like that's way more clear on the right. Um, and then also some other fun things, so like with. So uh, who's used like with uh, with open? When every time every time you open a file, it's with open file, right? Like none of this like f equals open. That's that's dangerous. Um, so like with is basically uh, wrapping code within like a try finally block. 
Um, but you know, it's doing that for you, and it's, it's like take whatever's inside the kind of finally in the exit, uh, it's taking care of that for you. So that way, like, you don't need to manage it in the kind of, you know, if you just open a file, you don't have to worry about all these, like, crazy things. Um, so kind of, you know, broadly, uh, a bunch of the different types of objects that we have uh, will implement different sets of these dunder methods or magic methods. Um, so for instance, like, let's say lists. Uh, lists can implement the, the add op operator. You can reverse a list. You can index into a list. Uh, you can iterate over a list. You can check if things are in it and how long it is. Um, and then kind of, you know, the different what things like, you know, numbers or like sets. Uh, you can, you know, subtract both numbers and sets. They have different semantics. You know, if you do, you know, two minus one, you'll get one back. You'll get another integer. Um, if you subtract sets, you'll also get another set back. Uh, but it'll basically take elements out of it. So it's, it's very different. Um, kind of, but it's, it's different for each object, but it makes sense. Um, like hopefully... You know, that this very simple syntax should abstract away, like, how it's doing that, and it should just be, like, clear, you know, what's going on. Uh, and then, you know, kind of, like, internally, there, there's basically, like, th these are the, you know, behind the hood uh, kind of methods that are actually getting called whenever you say this is, like, in your syntax, it's calling this method. Um, so, for instance, like, if we have a dictionary, uh, you know, it implements get item. You can check if things are in it, how long it is, uh, and you can iterate over it. And if you basically implement something that does all the same methods, it acts just like a dictionary. Uh, and everywhere that you could use a dictionary, you can use this thing. So let's get into live coding. Yes. <laughs> uh, okay. All right, so um, you can't help not use magic methods. Like if I do just anything, uh, like there, I, I created an object, I called init on it. So I'm using magic already. It's, it's wow. Um, what? Bigger. Bigger. Oh, yeah, zoom, enhance, CSI. <laughs> that, that's. Uh, you comfortable with that? Y yeah, that'll kind of work. Just think of the one. Trust. I'm gonna ruin this laptop. Oh, it restarted it for me. That didn't do anything. All right. Um, so yeah, I called init on the object there. Whoa. Just thinking about it. Stop. I ruined it. It doesn't do anything. Yeah. Sweet. I don't know why I clicked that trust button. That was terrible. Seriously? Kind of like untrusted again. All right. The. Uh, IPython? Oh, like, I restarted it already. Shut down. Hey, we're back. All right, sweet. Okay. Wow. How does David Beasley do it? Um, okay, so, and then if I say something, just if I just say object on, like, a REPL or an IPython notebook, uh, here I call the wrapper of it. So the wrapper is short for representation. Um, this basically just kind of describes what the object is. Uh, I can also do things like call string of the object. Um, here I'm, I'm internally calling string, which is in turn calling wrapper because the string is not really defined, or is not usually defined on objects, uh, especially ones that just like are completely empty like this one. Okay, uh, so like kind of the stringy types uh, that we can start using. Whoa. So here what we can do is basically define uh, a wrapper and a string on our own custom class here. Um, and typically what you would use for wrapper uh, is either something that you can like evaluate and get back the same kind of type of object that that's very similar. Um, or if you're kind of, if your class is representing like too much, too many things, uh, basically just something that like could, could help you describe like what it is. 
Um, whatever you, you put in here is probably going to be more useful than just printing the memory address of the object because who cares, like it'll change every time you use it. Um, so like, you know, right now, like if you, if you have custom objects, just go home and write a wrapper for them and you can just kind of understand them maybe a little bit better. Um, this is like one thing that you can add, nothing depends on it, unless you're basically, you know, opening, opening up a debug terminal and you like show the object, it will show you uh, whatever this thing prints out. Uh, and then string is, you know, you can kind of be a little more freeform. Uh, like th these uh, kind of blurbs here are basically just ripped right out from uh, the Python official docs. Uh, so we define the class. So when we say stringy uh, of Apple, um, right here when we just say A, it's doing wrapper of it. Uh, so it's calling this function and then printing basically what we, what we said here. So we're using F strings because we're cool and this is 3.6. Yeah. Um, so you notice like that gives the same thing uh, when I call wrapper. And then string, it's you know, something maybe a little more you know, apt. Uh, you, know, you might ask like, why not just like, define like, a two string method on it, like, it, you know, like Java or something. Um, you know, because when I call uh, two string, it's, it's literally the same as up here, where I'm just saying uh, string of A, I can say like, you know, B dot two string, and it's the same, same output. Um, so kind of the, the reason is that we want our types to look like other types. So if we define a string method on it, uh, you know, when we format it, for instance, here, um, this F string is just basically calling string on the object like it's not giving us a choice here when, it, when we do this um, and it's putting that in. So in this kind of this ugly thing. But if we define the string on it like we did in A, uh, you know, it kind of gives us this pretty, represent, or, uh, pretty string of it. Um, and then also here, like the wrapper of it, uh, where there's this like kind of exclamation point uh, format that you can use in uh, string formatting. Um, So kind of now we can hop to uh, like mathematical types and, and uh, magic methods. So these are a lot of the kind of infix methods. Uh, infix is basically just means it's like kind of in between two other uh, arguments or like binary operators. Um, so you know like a lot of these can be overloaded. You know like most of these apply to uh, integers um, except maybe matmol. Uh, but you know like you can add lists, right? You can add strings. It's, um, you can use uh, modulo arithmetic on strings as well uh, if you want to go old school. Um, here, though, what we're going to do is basically kind of uh, make like a little hack pathlib version. So I don't know if people have used pathlib. It's also kind of fun. Um, and it you know, uses or abuses, let's say, the uh, true div uh, magic method. So that way you can be clever and use things like slashes. Uh, and it'll basically kind of stick two parts together for you. Um, and here I have this like verbose uh, helper on it. So we can see it's basically this like AAA divided by BBB. Um, it's calling the TrueDiv method on this first object uh, with the second object as an argument and then outputting this uh, string. So, you know, like this right here is exactly that uh, and it gives us the exact same result. Um, we can be maybe a little bit more uh, you know, broad and what we'll accept. So here we can basically start concatenating other parts of a path onto our original path. Um, so the difference between the above one uh, here, where I just like assume that the other one is just like me and it has a dot path, um, is this one. I'm basically checking if the other one is like me. Um, and if it is, I can just basically get the path out. Uh, but if it's not, it's probably a string. Uh, so we'll just basically use that as is. Um, so then when I call it, uh, you know, we can basically concatenate uh, with like a path separator, um, just like a normal string to our special path object. And then what we also do is we return the path object again so we can kind of keep, you know, chaining it along. Uh, the, the thing that it doesn't do right now though is that we can't use this kind of like flipped around version of it. So we can't have like the first part of the path be a string and then the second part isn't. Um, so like it'll basically complain here that it's a type error because uh, you know the string method, the, the string object doesn't know how to divide itself but with a path, right? Like the string is completely clueless about what's going on here. Um, kind of other things that would like, you know, cause the same symptom, uh, that, uh, 
these guys. So the, the kind of solution for this is to use the reflected methods. So it's just like the, uh, the infix operator, uh, but there's this like R in front of it for reflected. So kind of internally what it's doing is it's you know, initially trying to call this true div method on a string uh, with the pathlib object. Uh, this fails because the string has no idea what's going on um, and it'll raise a type error. And then it basically gives us the option uh, so like it, it kind of swaps the arguments here and it calls it the rtruDiv method um, and gives us the option to kind of do something else instead. So here, um, I'm, I'm inheriting from path B, so we have the exact same trueDiv function. Uh, and then to implement rtruDiv, uh, we're basically kind of swapping uh, the order here. So like it, it looks like other we're putting first, um, but that's because it's reflected, so other was first. Uh, in, the, in the syntax. I don't know if that's clear. Um, so, but, you know, we can run it and then, you know, voila, uh, we, b we can basically put a string before our path object and we, we see it's calling our true div um, with our path object and then the string. So, and then we can basically return the path object and then we can kind of keep like stacking them together. Uh, here, you know, I can put home and Nick together. I can mix strings in with this. So, like, you know, it's, it's a path object. Now it's a string object, now it's a path object again. Uh, and here, you know, you can see it basically just kind of keep calling TrueDiv uh, to stack them all together. Um, you know, build like a, a full, you know, like more path lib where you can just kind of keep slashing everything, uh, mix in, you know, kind of slashes yourself, uh, and you basically just get out the, the, full, the full path. Um, and then to go maybe a little step uh, one step further and then make something that looks uh, more pathlib like um, is in Python 3.6 uh, there was this like kind of abstract base class which we'll get to a little bit later um, called os.pathlike. Uh, when something is os.pathlike, so it inherits from this class, uh, anything that tries to open, so like you know just the basic open function, uh, will basically be able to uh, call the method, call this fs path method and then figure out like what this object is in terms of like a path. So this path could be, you know, something completely, you know, whatever you want, uh, but as long as this FS path exists and it's a path like, uh, open will be able to figure out what to do because it'll just call it. So here we can see that I will kind of uh, create this path, which is, you know, just my, my user directory here uh, with this git ignore global. So like my global git ignore. Um, so it creates the path, it calls TrueDiv to stick those two together, um, and then we start to open it. So uh, here you can see that in the path object, it's calling this FS path to figure out what is the actual uh, thing to open. Um, and then, because this was on my computer, apparently he doesn't have a get ignore global. <laughs> All right. Got it. So yeah, like, you know, don't implement this yourself, just use Pathlet. <laughs> Now this is instruction purposes only. Uh, another thing would be like orderable types. So like let's say we have a bunch of version strings here. Um, if we sort them, we get this kind of like, you know, wrong ordering because uh, you know it's not they're not decimal strings. So you know, 10.5 is you know after 9.34, um, and then this is also after 9.4. Uh, so, you know, we could sort these if we just basically, you know, use like a key argument in our sorted function. Uh, and here, you know, we're basically turning each of the, uh, each of the strings into like a list of integers. Um, and then Python will sort these list of integers correctly. So we get, you know, 9.4, 9.34, 10.5, et cetera. Um, here though, what we can do is create like a kind of wrapper, cl uh, wrapper class for this object. Uh, called version, and then what we're do going to do here is implement the like a less than comparison operator. Um, in, in the kind of scheme of comparison operators, less than is kind of the, the base one that you want to implement. Uh, you can implement all of them. There's six. You know, less than, less than or equal, greater than, greater than or equal, equal, not equal. Um, but if if you implement just less than uh, and sometimes equal, uh, you can get a lot of other ones for free. Um, and then here, you know, we can basically just you know do less than and then compare these versions. And we see that you know, 32.52 is less than 93.2. 
uh, 10.0.0 is less than 9.99.999. Um, so if we convert our version strings into version objects now, um, and, and note this kind of output here, th this is only pretty because we define the wrapper here. Uh, if we didn't define wrapper, this would be uh, just a bunch of like memory addresses, not very, not very useful. Um, and now we can basically, you know, our code that is like kind of at the high level is much simpler. So we just say sorted. Uh, and we can see it's doing all these comparisons internally and then it prints out the correct sorting of versions. Uh, we can find the maximum version. Uh, we can see it basically doing all these comparisons, telling us the maximum version. Minimum, same thing. Um, and you know, furthermore, this is useful because you can't always give a key argument to things. So the heap queue uh, kind of library object um, in Python, uh, you know, there's no, like in this heapify, I can't say key equals anything. It, it just won't allow it. Like it's not part of the library. Um, so here, because our objects are intrinsically sortable, he, the heap queue heapify is able to sort them as we want. Uh, and then, so we basically heapified it. Uh, heaps are kind of, heaps let you sort things like maybe a little bit faster because not everything is completely sorted. It's just sorted at the, the, uh, the very top. Um, just check it out, like it's, it's kind of a fun standard library tool. Um, but then we can basically just pop uh, versions off of it and it's in the correct order. So, and we can see like as it's popping versions off, it's also kind of internally resorting it because Heapify doesn't fully sort it at the start. And then to jump tracks again. <laughs> uh, this is something I actually like implemented myself uh, like in kind of real code just to, you know, I had all these like dictionaries I wanted to kind of look through where it's, you know, okay, like this server gets these configuration values uh, you know, servers in production get these configuration values and like every server, you know, needs to know these things. Uh, so, was, you know, like I basically had just like a bunch of dictionaries and I would want to kind of go through them in order to come up with, you know, like what is the correct configuration value. Um, so it's kind of initially started out looking something like this where I'd give it a list, I have to give it a bunch of dicks and then I could get item out of it uh, with a key. So I would basically go through all the dictionaries in order um, and then try to pull out uh, the thing at that key value. Uh, this suppress is another uh, cool thing that I, I learned probably a month ago. Uh, this basically just like, if a key error happens, it just ignores it uh, and then quits out of the width. Um, if any other exception happens, it'll raise it. Uh, so this is kind of like just doing like a try, you know, return D key, accept key error, pass, uh, but in like one line instead of four. Um, so here, you know, I can basically just like use it uh, Here's all these dicks, uh, you know, name Chippy, some other stuff, uh, this hello greeting at the, the lowest level. Um, and then when I kind of pull things out of it, you know, if I say greeting and name, it gives me hello Chippy because it found this name first and it didn't have to go to this one. Uh, and then it didn't, found, and it didn't find a greeting until it got down here. So it looks kind of like a dictionary, um, but we can't do a lot of other things. So there's no length of it that fails because um, it doesn't have a length. Uh, we can't pull the values out of it. Uh, we can't like check if a certain key is in it. Um, you know, like is name in there? We don't really know here. Uh, and then also, you know, sometimes if you want to like JSON serialize it, JSON can be picky about like what it serializes. Like date times, you can't serialize directly. Um, so sometimes, you know, if we could call dict on it, then we could serialize it. Can't do that either. But what we can do is use abstract base classes for containers. Um, so it's this uh, standard library uh, thing, which will basically make your objects look even more like dictionaries. And it'll also kind of do some coding for you. Um, so for instance, like what we want to make it look like is this mapping. Uh, mapping is the kind of general term for dictionary. So if we implement things in this column here, if we implement get item, iter, and length, then it will basically create all of these methods for us. Like we don't have to do anything other than inherit this, and then it'll give us contains, keys, items, values, uh, get, uh, and then the comparison equals and not equals. Um, with you know just adding the uh, thing in, in the uh, inheritance here. 
So what we did here is we basically pulled the get item and init from the previous one. Um, and then here's this kind of helper that lists all the keys that are in all the dictionaries. Uh, the length of the thing is the length of all those keys. Uh, and if we want to iter through it, we can basically iter through all those keys and just emit keys. So when you iter through a dictionary, you get keys generally. It's like if you say like list of a dictionary, you'll get like keys out. Um, so now when we implement, or now when we uh, create this like fallback, dic fallback dictionary, um, you know, we, we can, like here we go, you know, it's, here's the length of it, three. Uh, for each key in it, uh, you know, misc name greeting, we can print, we can index into it and get that uh, value out. Uh, we can also list the values. We can see if name is in there. Uh, remember, like we didn't implement values here. We did not implement contains. It's just doing this for us. Uh, we can turn it into just like a normal dictionary, flatten it. Um, we can check if that dictionary is equal to what we gave it originally. You know, these are all true. Um, and like all of these were basically given to us just for inheriting from this abstract base class. Uh, and then kind of one last thing for fun. Um, you know, kind of uh, some of the earlier ones, they were using IPython Notebook. Um, there's kind of IPython Notebook magic methods as well. Uh, kind of proprietary magic, because I call it here, um, where it's kind of single underscore methods, single underscore wrapper methods. Um, and IPython notebook, you know, you can do SVGs, PNGs, like all these kind of different, uh, this format. And if you return it, uh, IPython notebook will attempt to display it for you. So here, this like get xkcd hot link, all this does is get the, the URL for like a given comic number. Um, and then here, you know, it's a get item, so I can index into it with square brackets. And then I will return a comic with this uh, proprietary magic method, uh, wrapper HTML. Um, it'll basically just, you know, use a basic uh, HTML tag. So, you know, I have my XKCD thing. Uh, and if, you know, we can basically index into it, it gives us back this object, and then IPython basically just displays it for us. Um, I don't, I don't know if anyone has like a favorite number. Does anyone have an XKCD comic number they like? 42. 42? I don't know. What That's cheating. That's what you said. Yeah. That was, okay. Is that one better? Oh man, this one's like dark. Dang, Dang it. Um, there was like a recent Python one. This is maybe, some, might inspire someone for like a, a future Python talk. Uh, you know, there, there's kind of this like, you know, mess of Python packaging, uh, which sometimes can be confusing for new people. Um, and then even for me, where it's like, I don't know, you know, like on, on a Mac here, there's like frameworks, I, I don't know what's going on. <sighs> All right, so uh, that's basically it. I, you know, if you want to download this, you can check out, I have some like bonus content at the bottom uh, about context managers, it's pretty fun. Uh, but, you know, that's basically it. Um, does anyone have questions, comments? What's your favorite magic method? My favorite magic method? Um, I would say, like, you know, it's, it's pretty basic. It's just like the container method. So, you know, it's where you can implement, you know, kind of like we did with the fallback dict, uh, you know, implement get item. You can pull things out, implement iter. Uh, iter could be pretty fun. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't know. Like, do you have one? Like, what's, like the, what's the correct answer? It's like picking your favorite shot. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I, I love them all. So, kind of dovetailing off of that, but slightly different. He said, "What's your favorite?" But what do you think is the most underrated? Most underrated magic method. Uh, let's let's look. Uh. <laughs> <Which one? laughs> so there's some of these like the the get get attribute um, like get adder and get attribute are like extremely hard to use correctly um, because it's, it's kind of weird with like get attribute because when you like when the thing tries when Python tries to access the you know like all these are attributes of the class when it tries to access it sometimes it will then end up calling itself and you get into this like recursion loop 
Um, so that one can be like, I guess, really, it's really hard to use, so I'm assuming it's really powerful. Um, and then there's like kind of all these like asynchronous methods uh, that I've kind of yet to get uh, kind of fully familiar with. Um, you know, like at, at Telmix, like we use just like a ton of like async I.O. stuff, uh, which is kind of stuff I've always wanted to learn, and like now I can, so. So question 3B, are there any 3D. Python 3 magic methods? Uh, the Python 3 magic Python methods. Two. Uh, yeah, so like there's the, the true div and floor div. Uh, that was because of this, the like kind of schism uh, between like just one slash, two slashes. Uh, I think um, matmol was 3.5, uh, and then you know rmatmol, imatmol. Um, what else? Like all the async ones are relatively new. I think 3.5 or 3.6. Um, 3.6 might have added, I think, like uh, some of the like context manager, like async context managers. Um, what else? Yeah, I think th those are like the kind of uh, new fun ones. Uh, any other questions? All right, looks like it. Uh, thank you very much.